Hello Collective, it's G here from Golden Thread Tarot. How are you lovelies doing? I hope that you're doing well and that you are blessed and full with abundance as always, my sweets, okay? So, I woke up with a very heavy message on my mind of combating any kind of energy or anyone, whether or not it be like an energy, a self-deprecating thought process, uh, intrusive thoughts, um... Or if this is literally coming, if you have some body in your life or you have an energy in your life, whatever it is, it's trying to make you today feel like you are not good enough. I'm just here to call bullshit. <laughs> bullshit on that. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Okay? That's what I have. That's what I have to say at 44 down the clock as soon as I said that. Okay? So for some of you, okay, uh, spirit sign, not saying for, for some of you, for all of you, Okay? This could heavily be being married and someone projecting a very particular image of what they, okay. So spirit is telling me that, that you are a mirror to this person, um, to this energy, to this person, you are a mirror to this energy. And so this person is always trying to make you feel like what they are on the inside, what they are, how they handle things, what how they think about things, how they view things, right? And it's this kind of darker energy here, okay? For a lot of you too, um, this could be a situation where you have received like verbal, um, verbal deprecating, you know, um, talk towards yourself, okay? And then that talk that you heard um, you replicated and it became like your inner monologue. So maybe you had a parent or like a, a role figure, uh, a, a role model figure. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I just woke up. It's early. <laughs> a role model figure that, you know, that that came, became like your inner monologue or your inner voice. But spirit is saying, yeah, it's, it's pretty quick, pretty harsh, pretty quick to anger. You know, um, there is some shadow work to do around, well, one, this person needs to do shadow work, because for some of you, this is a person, you know, this is an energy um, that, it's like somebody is trying to, like, cast this energy over you, and that's definitely a confirmation for some of you, Six of Cups, that it's somebody from your past, or that it's somebody from your childhood, okay? Uh, yeah, I, I just heard Spirit say this person could be close, closer than you think. And it's just kind of this energy of the hermit. Age of Cups. It's this kind of immature energy. It's like this person or this energy, this entity, whoever it is, whatever it is, it like, it's almost kind of like, like this bully energy. Yeah, the spirit is saying that you need to set healthy, healthy boundaries, okay? That it's part of a soul contract with this written in the stars and this healthy boundary star seed. I think it's definitely written in the stars, you know, written in the stars here with those stars in the background. Um... For you to go inside and do this work and for this energy to come into contact with you because it's really meant for them to reflect on it and to kind of work on themselves. But this person would rather project onto you. Yeah. <laughs> page of Cups, Page of Pentacles. Yeah. Um, For some of you, I just got that this person doesn't want your soul contract to be over. Like, I feel like for a lot of you, your part of the soul contract has already been fulfilled. And this person, their part of the soul contract hasn't been uh, hasn't been f fulfilled. And they're kind of projecting this, this devalued, like, worth onto you. Like... Like, you're not worth it, or you're not worth working for, or you're not worth working on. And it was 444 down on the clock right when I was talking about that, too. <laughs> yeah, because I don't like that energy with this magician energy. But I feel like this person, okay, 
So this is definitely a soulmate energy here. Now we have a lot of different types of soulmates, right? This person definitely strikes me as kind of a karmic soulmate, especially with the lover's card being right behind the nine of wands, which is uh, just straight up, that's karmic lessons. Um, this person manifested you into their life and their spirit guides manifested you into their life. And, of course, you had a soul contract with this person for them to come into your life and for, for them to trigger some kind of shadow work um, within you, but also for you to trigger shadow work within them. Like, this person, is, like, you are a mirror to this person. So when they look at you, they see, they actually see themselves. But they don't realize that. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> when they're looking at you, they actually see themselves. You see that reflection? You are that mirror. And it's like this it's like a, a wound that this person needs to heal. So there's this kind of energy of like, so if this person tells you you're not worth anything, it's because this person feels like they're not worth anything. If this person feels like nobody's ever gonna love you, if it's because they truly deep inside feel like nobody's gonna love them. Um, if they projecting, or e even if this is an entity, like a darker entity or lower di lower dimensional entity, and they're like you're never going to feel love. It's because they don't, they, they have fallen from God's love and they don't feel love. And so it's this kind of energy of like, no, like that's you, fam. That's not me. <laughs> that's you. You don't feel, you feel worthless. You feel low. You feel dark. You feel fear. You feel scared. You know? Because that's what it is to exist in that lower vibrational energy, right? Is to just be consumed with that fear or with that self, you know, that self-hate, that self-loathing, which is why they want to try to influence other people to feel, or other energies to feel that way because that's the way they feel. That's the constant state that they live in. That's the constant state of this is just, this is my world. And, you know. Pull yourself out of it because that's not your that that's not your world, right? You're manifesting a different projection state. You don't have to be embody, you know, you don't have to embody whatever somebody else wants to project onto you. And whether, like I said, whether this be your own intrusive thoughts, which honestly could be being caused by this darker energy, okay, by this karma, or also by this person, okay. Yeah, spirit's kind of showing me like. It, even if it is a person, it's kind of like a person's dark thoughts towards you is trying to create like a connection or trying to create a pathway for dark energies of that fear and dark, you know, darkness to kind of cling to you. And um, yeah, it's because that, again, like I said, that person has dark entities that cling to them. That person has dark energies of, you know, fear and hate and mistrust that are around them so they see every so they want to project that energy onto everybody else's world and like but like i said you are that earthly mirror to this person with being the the queen of pentacles i mean to say the same is true for like high, little high school bullies right <laughs> like no matter what it is, right, it's really about the fact that most people that are bullied get bullied themselves or get bullied at home or, you know, or bullying, bullying other people because at one point they got bullied or they're bullying other people because they don't want to get bullied, right? They want to just shift the, the, the heat onto somebody else. Like, look at that person so that you don't look at me and my insecurities and my own issues and my own problems. And that's exactly what this person's mindset is. That's exactly what this person's mindset is. It's like a high school bully. Because, hello, you're the empress. For some of you, this could be a motherly energy or a mom energy or a, a, the mother of your children. Okay? Or this could be also, I just got out of nowhere, that this could be somebody else's mother. Okay, I, strict, I specifically heard for some of y'all the mother of your divine masculine. Or if you're the divine masculine, this could be your mother. Again, this is reminding me of what I said earlier. If I was like somebody was rude to you or 
something in your childhood and, you know, that became like your own internal inner critic or your own internal inner monologue was self-deprecating. And it's because this person has a self-deprecating internal monologue. So the only thing they knew to teach you was the way that they think and the way that they feel. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it the right way. Right. But Ace, Ace of Swords, that's the truth. This is also a realization that you need to have here is that Tell me more about this Two of Swords. Yeah, because honestly, as much as this person might want to try or this energy might want to try to trap you here, you're not trapped here, right? Only thing they can do is try... <laughs> Only thing they can try to do is influence you to feel this way about yourself but you have the like you have sovereignty over yourself you know you have you know dominion over your I don't want to I don't necessarily want to use the word dominion but I feel like that's what I feel like this person wants to have dominion over you like they want to try to control you like they want to try to manipulate you they want to try to soften you or you know hit low blows on you and things like that. They want to try to project all this energy onto you. And like the more you shine and the more you're truthful and the more you're honest, the more you're brave, like the just more and more angry this person gets. They got issues. <laughs> they really do. Um, which is exactly why this is a soul contracted event. This is shadow work. And this and it's gonna keep coming up for this person. They're gonna keep meeting person after person after person that triggers them in this way until they realize I need to go inside inside myself and figure out what the hell is going on with me. I did not even look <laughs> even really register, but also the shadow work card says stare deeply into the mirror. Hello. <laughs> Again, a confirmation of that. Again, right? We ended right straight on that again, right? So it's definitely manifesting these soulmate people in, in your life, into their life as well, okay? That's here to help them learn these lessons here, okay? So that they can walk away, you know? from the past and start a journey here with the page of wands towards a, having a new heart, cleansing their heart, cleansing their mind, cleansing their soul. Ace of Cups. But again, I was just about to say, but they keep not doing it. <laughs> and then look, they, the, the, the divine keeps handing them the opportunities to see the truth. And this person keeps, get that shit out of here. <laughs> What's in this cup? Divine love, gross. I like all my cups to be empty. I like empty cups. No water, no hydration, no emotions, no nada. Get this. <laughs> I like dry cups, only dry cups. Yeah. This person is possibly, you know, you're this person's fourth time to try to learn this lesson. Yeah. Look at this, y'all. Look at the story that Spirit is telling y'all. Okay, and then the next card after that, look, the truth is this person wants to be drinking from that cup. They really, really do. Okay, but they have to take the step up. That page of cups, they have to take that step up. And it's so weird because on the inside, like, this person wants to. This person is thirsty. They're, they're, they're dehydrated. They're, um... dehydrating I guess yeah like I was trying to I almost said they're starving but I was like no that's that's from when you're hungry and I'm like what what is it when you're you know I guess yeah it's just you know ending from dehydration I don't know, anyway right and the spirit says hey like 
why you why you keep pouring out that cup? Because I'm telling you, this this Knight of Cups in this deck, just the way they they're looking over, always gives me the sly energy of like this person is like, like they're just like, no, nah, I don't want that cup. And then as soon as nobody looking, they're like, oh, can I get a few drops that I spilled on the ground out of that cup? <laughs> like I swear, they want it. Hello? They want it, but they're moving so slow towards it. But eventually they'll get there with that Knight of Pentacles, right? Because we got the Page of Cups and the Page of Pentacles, the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. Like, slowly, 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 this person's getting there. And slowly, 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 they're going to drop all those wands. And they're going to wake up and they're going to realize, hey, I need to I need to step up. I need to face my fears. I need to wake up from this nightmare. This is an illusion, Okay. I'm trying to cast an illusion here. This is an illusion of, it's almost like, it's almost like this person would rather fight an illusion that they cast onto you instead of just going inside. Like they'd rather attack you and make you a victim or they'd rather, they'd rather focus on you, right? Yeah, again, with that whole bully energy, right? Don't focus on me. I'll fo focus on you. I'm not going to focus on me, so I'll focus on you. I'll focus my own internalized hate that I have towards myself, but I can't register in my mind that I have this internalized hate, so I'm just going to hate somebody else. So I'm just going to cast judgment on somebody else because the truth is I really cast that judgment twice as hard on myself, right? So when you meet those uh, judgmental people, just know that they're judging themselves twice two or three times harder although it might they might never admit it but that's why that's why they're such a judgmental person because they judge themselves just as harshly as they judge everybody else their own internal monologue is twice as nasty as whatever kind of nastiness they put out to anybody else which is kind of sad if you think about it but yeah y'all listen to the story listen to the story okay this person feels left out lonely locked out in the cold but yet all they do is cast loneliness around them, back to that way to everybody else. It's this weird, you know, you're creating exactly what you don't want by your actions. You know, how your actions are this, this weird self-sabotaging energy. What this person, all this person wants to do is feel safe and at home and accepted and loved and celebrated, but their actions don't really show that exactly because this person this is some kind of defense mechanism for this person again like i said this is a survival instinct i can't go inside and examine how you know it would be way easier to judge other people as being bad nasty people than it would be to take the time to stop and ask myself well why am i so judgmental of other people why do i have such issues with other people why do other people's uh you know uh choices in life make me feel like I need to attack them when I you know I just need to worry about myself no you know this person they'll they'll do somersaults you know <sighs> yeah they're sh they're showing me this person is like 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 a like an 80 or 90 year old person trying attempting to do somersaults like willing to fall down and break a hip or willing to fall down and hurt themselves versus just Taking the medicine, which is looking at themselves. Yeah, they just keep just keep pouring out that cup over and over and over and over. But these emotions aren't going away, right? Look how it's building up an ocean all around this person. And eventually, they're going to get to a point where, you know, they're going to be drowning. Eventually, they're going to get to a point where they are going to be drowning. They're not going to be, they, you know, they're just going to be lost in these emotions. The Spirit's saying, you're lost in these emotions. Stand up, fight for yourself, right? Stop trying to fight other people and fight for yourself. Be there for yourself. Stand up for yourself. And that's what this person's, that's what Spirit, and that's what this person's higher self, that's what this person's intuition is telling them. Don't judge other people. Be there for yourself. Don't act like that towards other people. Be there for yourself. But this person just keeps projecting this energy. They they would rather just keep, keep, keep projecting this energy onto other people instead of just, you know, being there for themselves. Yeah. Right? Spirit's like, progress. And then, of course, right, the King of Cups, right? We started out here with the Page of Cups. 
and with the page of pentacles and here we've made it to the king of cups and the king of pentacles this person is very stubborn very 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 stubborn you see that bull there they're very 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 stubborn i'm hearing bullheaded or pig-headed you know like bullheaded like this person is just like again you know look so it could have Taurus very prom prominently in their chart. But this is like a low vibrational version of Taurus. Maybe even like a cat like a low vibrational Capricornian Capricornian energy as well. Yeah, this person is constantly always trying to juggle this energy here, juggle this facade here to entertain other people. But look how yeah. They're constantly trying to juggle to keep that ocean here, as you see, at a distance. To keep people at a distance from them. Yeah, when the truth is, Ten of Cups, all they just want is emotional satisfaction. This might even be the type of person that, that tells themselves, you know, that, that works and works and works to tell themselves, like, oh, I... I, you know, I don't, I don't want a man or I don't want a wife. I don't want, I don't want a partner. No, 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 no. I don't want friends. I don't want this. I'm fine by myself, but yet they're overly clingy, you know? So if this is like a, like a, a parent that refuses to, you know, but yet they're overly clingy to their child, they treat, they, they want to treat their child like their spouse. So they want to treat their child. They want to demand that their child does things that they should actually be relying or they should be having a spouse there. It's like, if, well, well, it's like, well, I, what do I need a, a spouse for when I can just get my child or get this, other, get these other people in my life to step into a position that's not even theirs. It's not even their responsibility to feel because I choose to not go inside and not heal myself and stay single and, and just keep myself in this perpetual struggle. Right? It's like, well, it's not my responsibility to step up and do something that you won't do for yourself. And again, here we are. Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. This Cups and these Pentacles just going through the whole suit. Right back to that Empress. Again. So again, more confirmation for some of you that this could be a mother here. On the inside of this person, they so just want, you know, a healthy, happy life like everybody else, you know, but they just don't want to put in the work. They want other people to do the work for them. Yeah, look, they want other people to do the work for them, but it's a part of your soul contract to teach this person, you know, in, in a way of having healthy boundaries, in a way of, you know, saying like, no. Like, no, for some of you walking away from this person is going to be, is going to be the solution here, you know, putting really strong boundaries in between and saying, no, like, that's not my responsibility. No, you know, I love you. I'll be there for you. But no, it's not my position to, you know, to, to stay in the position of your husband. I'm your son. Or, you know, it's not my position to, to stand in the position of your husband. I'm your daughter. Or, you know, to stand in the position of your husband. I'm your mom you can flip it around if this person's your child or this person's a member of your family or something. And they're wanting basically you, it's like they refuse to do the work. They refuse to, you know, to do what they need to do to heal themselves, to get into a health, a healthy, 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 happy relationship. And that's really what they want. But all, everything that they do actually pushes other people away from them, you know? And so the people that they feel like, have to be around them like their fa their friends and their family members and stuff that they feel obligated to be around them they put all these obligations on everyone else all around them that really should be the you know really should be the place of a spouse or the place of themselves to do right yeah it's just like just do it for me just do it for me won't you just do it i'm also hearing that, that if this is like a parent or a child that this person or this could it could be a spouse but i'm really not getting that dynamic here but it could be um um what is it called uh voluntary incompetence where the person like pretends like they can't do it you know they're just like oh not like oh no i'm gonna I, like it's like they purposely do a bad job so that somebody else will have to do it for them you know they purposely self-sabotage themselves so that people will have to come in and save them right because they're needy and they need attention like that 
So, yeah. So, the main thing with this is that spirit wants you to know that it's not your responsibility to stay, like, and baby this person or to stay and mother this person or to, um, you know, coddle this person because they don't want to grow up and they don't want to deal with their own things, you know? Um, it's their responsibility to do that. It's their responsibility to, to learn, you know, how to do better, how to choose better for themselves, you know, I really feel like the main thing that you can do, there's not going to be like you talking, you showing, it's going to be, it's uh, as, as a sense of like, I, f I do feel like, let me just say this, because there's only so much you can say. There's only so many ways that you can say, hey, I need you to respect me. You know, it's like there are certain things that you can say, hey, you know, that's a boundary you're crossing. I'd really appreciate if you didn't do that. And there are some things that it's just like, well, it's, that's an obvious boundary that this person knows that if somebody was doing it to them, they wouldn't like, you know. So it's almost this energy of like just stay your ground and know and, and expect this person to just evolve and grow up. And, you know, if they cross a boundary – let them know they cross a boundary. If they keep crossing boundaries, you know, it might be important. Always have, like, compassion and understanding for this person. But that doesn't mean that you have to have this person in your life or this person has to have so much sway over your life. Master. This person is a teacher to you. They have, uh, they have, they have been put in your life to teach you a valuable lesson. Yeah, and this valuable lesson here that this person is teaching you is to, one forgive, like I said, have forgiveness in your heart, right? Have empathy and compassion, like it says right here. Forgiveness is the key to love. Empathy and compassion will lead the way. Anger and pain only weigh you down. So yes, don't cast out anger onto this person. Don't cast out, uh, don't feed into the anger or feed into the fear energy, right? Because for a lot of you, especially in the situation where it's like, this is like the mother of someone you're trying to connect to and they're casting this very negative image of you out there into the world, okay? Um, don't feed into that negative image, right? Um, don't feed into that negative image, but stand your ground, right? Stand your ground. Know who you are. Know your worth. Don't let other people try to define you as, as who you are. Just stand in your values. Stand in who you are and... You know, your tr the truth will be out. The truth will be obvious to anybody who cares to look. And those who don't care to look, not your business, not, not your problem to convince them of something else. Let them live the life they want to, you know. So for some of you, Spirit could be saying that some of you could be led to walk away from somebody. Somebody perhaps that you were trying to come into union with or somebody that you were trying to... It's like almost like spirits like don't feel guilty from from putting distance in between yourself and this person or for choosing someone else or for because at the end of the day what you're really doing is choosing yourself. Meditation, breathe in the love, light and knowledge of the universe, travel inward, still your mind and listen to your heart. So spirit is saying that meditation is going to be very important right now, but also just ha finding peace. That's what I'm really getting from this, right? Finding peace inside of your heart with exactly what happened in this situation especially if this was like with a mother or something have peace and understanding in your heart and know that this person is just suffering from their own you know um but don't allow that to keep you tethered to this person because for a lot of you um having these healthy boundaries setting these boundaries and being like no you know i don't care if you are my mom or you are this or uh, is going to be the only way this person is going to learn this lesson it is part of your lesson right to learn that this person is um, you know, kind of like a saboteur, but to learn how to not have anger or pain um, attached to that, to just understand what this person was put in your life to do, which was to teach you to have healthy boundaries between you and them. And they show you that that's the truth with their actions and how they're acting. Pupil, master and pupil, okay? Take this person under your wing. They are here to, you are here to guide them on their divine path. Be patient and kind. So exactly, right? But like I said, I feel like for a lot of you here, the point is to, I'm not, and I'm not trying to say, oh, like abandon this person. You know, they're toxic. Abandon them. Get away from them. Like, although for, for some of you, that is the, that really is the case, you know, and you know it. If you know it's, if you, you know it's the case. If you, if you know, you know, that it's kind of like, no, you know, I, I know I love this person, but you know, my life is going to be a lot better without them having like an active role, like an everyday active role in my life. Like 
you know? Like, I love my mom, but I can't live with them. I love my mom, but or I love my family members, but I can't live with them. I can't be with them. I can't, uh, you know, some of you are going to are gonna find that when you live at a distance from this person, maybe even like a different state, like, you're going to have a lot more peace in your life, honestly. Yeah. And for a lot of you, Spirit is saying, all of you, Spirit is saying, release the past. Release the past of of all the hardship, right? Because this has honestly been like a meditation, like almost like a meditative work that you've been doing here with this person, okay? Where it's like this master pupil where you're teaching each other and you're you know learning from each other, okay? And for some of you, okay, I do kind of see this. For some of you, this could be like a twin flame energy here, okay? Or a twin soul or whatever. Like a, it, it's definitely soulmate energy here where it's your soul contracted to come into this person and your soul to, to, to help each other trigger, to trigger each other and to unlearn the negative, you know. So for a lot of you, this is going to mirror spirit saying. This could mirror in your twin flame journey. It could mirror in your journey with your parents or your journey with the people that raised you. Um, um, that this journey that you're on right here is really going to mirror the healing that you need to do, right? So, I mean, if you do identify being on the twin flame journey, when you're on this journey and you meet each other, you are those mirrors to each other and you see each other's wounds, right? You see in, in looking at that person, you see your own wounds that you need to heal, right? And you come to a place where you stop projecting onto your twin or you stop projecting onto that other person and saying, this is your problem because you do this and you do this. And that doesn't mean that they don't do those things. But the real issue with projection is understanding that when we're, again, like when we're bullying or we're judging or we're what ju we're really doing is judging an aspect of ourselves that we do not like or that we reject that we see within that person. You know, and you come to a place in your journey when you realize that because it could be a lot easier to realize that, but then you come into contact with your twin flame and it's like, what the hell? But it also teaches you to have love and compassion for, for, for this other person and for what they're going through because you're like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> right? And so it creates this... Uh, this energy here where you can do this shadow work and you can release the past, right? Where you can release the pain. Let go of old energies that are keeping you stuck in the past. Learn from your karma and live in the now. Exactly. So for a lot of you, this whole journey that you've been going on, this whole soul journey, regardless if you're a twin flame or not, we all go through this journey, you guys. That's the point, right? That is that is our soulmate journey that all of us do here. We all have soul contracted lessons that we're supposed to learn spirit spent sends people in our lives often from our soul tribe from soul family we reincarnate over and over again with these same people right or if you don't believe in reincarnation you are put here to come into contact to have experience with certain people to to foster growth within your soul right you in some type of way teach this person a lesson this person in some type of way teaches you in a lesson through the experience that you have together right and it is to trigger these things inside of us that need to heal. It's to trigger the shadow work, right? That we need to do in ourselves. And all of this is to help us come into union, not only with our twins or with our soulmates, right? With our soul family, but within ourselves. To come into union with the parts of ourselves that we have rejected, that we turn away from, that we do not like, right? It is for us to foster a better relationship with ourselves, to know ourselves better, and to work on the type of self-judgment and self-deprecating um, talk that we might have towards ourselves, that we, that we might be externalizing and projecting onto other people, right? So if you ever find yourself saying, what's this person's issue and feeling triggered, Ask yourself what's your issue, okay? Now, I'm not saying that every single time some butthole comes up to you and says something and just tries to throw you off that that, you know, but sometimes it is. Okay, and there you go. 
<laughs> Union Twin Flame. Okay? There you go. In case you were wondering, yes. You know, this is a, a, a form of, yeah. You know, so like I said, there's confirmation right there for you. Okay? So, you know, you could, you know, I really feel like you are being triggered here. Okay? To come into inner union with yourself through these karmic cycles that you've been working through with these other people, with these other energies in your life, right? And yes, like I said, I do feel like that is a kind of, that could be definitely a big twin flame energy here, especially around the energy of um, this being a person that is trying to project this energy onto you, like you're the bad guy. Whether that be, yeah, for some of you, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like a divine masculine sitting there or a masculine energy sitting there with like somebody whispering in their ear. Now, whether or not that is an actual physical person, like, like I said, like their mother or whether or not that's their, their internalized, mo their internalized monologue that came from this person or whether or not this person, this divine masculine person, this masculine energy might have darker energies around them you know, that are trying to influence them to have a very negative mindset, um, which is kind of a little bit of all of it, because that's what generational toxic mindsets are, or aka generational curses are, right? Uh, we have people that have these projected mind states of there is this part of me that I don't like, so I'm going to teach my kid not to like it. So I'm, they're going to teach their kid not to like it. So they're going to teach their kid not to like it. So they're just going to teach themselves, you know. So, you know, it's like, oh, well, um, it's like when you meet that person and you're having a conversation and you, you express something that happened in your childhood and they're like, what? And you're like, yeah, that's just what we did in my family. And you're like, and those people are like, that's not normal. In the sense of like, that's kind of abusive. Did you not realize that? Like. Oh, and it takes those people, right? And for a collective, you are that person. You are that person being like, you know, that that was toxic, right? You know, that's not right, right? And that can trigger a defense, you know, like, no, what, you know, it's just my family. That's just what we do. Like, no, you're talking like blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so... You know, that's the reaction that some people are going to have that triggered reaction of like, no, like, don't tell me, you know, because they don't want to, they don't want to look at the truth, right? It would be, it's less plain, painful to call you a liar, to call you false, to call you a bully, to call you a bad person, right? Than it is to look inside and, and think, oh, wow, yes. Maybe I do need to kind of recontextualize what some of this actually meant in my mind, right? Because then they have to start thinking, wow, like my parents abused me and that that's painful to start to think about, you know, like, oh, that, well, that really wasn't healthy. But it is healthy to look at those things, to recognize them for what they are so that you can evolve outside of them so that you can realize, actually, this isn't a part of me that I, this, this really doesn't resonate with who I really am. This really doesn't resonate with, with the kind, loving soul that I really am, with the kind of kind, loving soul that spirit wants me to, to have for myself, the kind of compassion and love spirit wants me to have for myself, which is my soul's truth deep inside, right? Kind, compassionate love is my soul's truth deep inside. But it's all the shadow. It's all of the fear. It's all of the 3D yuck gunk, you know, all of the, the sleepiness, the matrix, right? The old paradigms that get taught to us that cover up that sweet, loving, compassionate soul that we are underneath it all, right? Or for some people, they get born into a body that has a brain that does not have that capacity to connect to that right and that's how you get things like you know like psychopaths and, and whatnot and narcissists excuse me full moon the completion okay draw from the power of the climax go bathe in the light and embrace the night release and give back in gratitude so exactly so it's really a divine blessing here um you this whole cycle with this person this lesson of divine self-love and compassion and understanding is really a divine blessing although it feels like an ass whooping when you're getting it right uh, it feels like an ass whooping when you're getting it but 
it is really truly a divine blessing, right? For you to evolve, right? For you to have this experience to evolve, to become stronger, to, to get more knowledge about yourself and about the world and how things really work, right? But Spirit is also saying that this this karmic cycle here with this energy is coming, you know, is at a completion here. Is <laughs> drawing to a completion. So. Okay. Again, surrender with this new moon energy. Like, so surrender to divine plan. And this new moon energy is the ending and the beginning of a, of a new, of a new cycle. Right? So you are ending this cycle with whatever energy this is, right? With this negative self-talk, with this other people projecting their issues onto you and you internalizing that and thinking, well, maybe I am the problem. No. <sighs> and it's such and it's such like a balance here, right? Of saying that there's some sometimes that people are projecting the issue and it's like, no, you're not the problem, but there is this this self-realization energy as well. So there's balance between it. It's like sometimes you need to realize that the, the, this is a lesson that you need to learn. And sometimes you need to realize that people are trying to learn a lesson by projecting the lesson onto you that they, you know, they're, they're, you, God is basically like God's using you is a big, like, like, um, like, tra like, they're showing me like a trampoline, like how you throw like a ball or something on a trampoline, it just comes back, or like a boomerang, like this person is throwing all these shots at you just for them to turn around and boomerang right back at them to be like, no, this is your lesson to learn. Um, and that's not the easiest position to be put in. <laughs> it's really not. And it's going to cause you to strengthen and you to learn lessons and you to learn a little bit more about this world and to learn about this whole cycle right here, right? And for some of you, that's the lesson that spirit, the lesson isn't always there's something inside of you that needs to heal. Sometimes the lesson is you just need to know that there are people out there that do this. You just need to know the truth. Healing karmic cycle, exactly. You need to learn how to to withstand and understand that some people are going to do this and to live in compassion and forgiveness and understanding for them anyway. To have empathy and compassion. Excuse me, get down, babes. For this situation here. Karmic lessons are testing you. You you need you need to heal past karmic cycles. Energy needs to be cleared. Focus on healing yourself to bring in new positive energy. And the new and the healing that you need to do is a lot of forgiveness for a lot of you. Forgive these people, right? What is what is the the quote from from Jesus, right? Where he's like, "Forgive them, Father, because they know not what they do," right? And that's kind of the energy, which I understand. None of us can be Jesus, right? None of us can be. Um, well, that's not true. We all can eventually get to the point where we ascend to an ascended master state. We can all get there eventually, given enough lifetimes, given enough time to learn and ascend, right? But um, Spirit is saying that there is a separation here or there needs to be a separation here between you and this person so there, so this energy of healing can begin. For Because for some of you, your healing cycle is going to begin when you walk away from this energy, when you put like actual physical distance in between yourself and this energy and when you draw healthy boundaries, energetic boundaries between you and this person, like officially let this separation be a thing, right? Um, so that these lessons can be learned, right? Because for some people, as long as you're there, just still being there, they're just going to keep bouncing that energy, that problem energy towards you, this problem energy towards you. You're the problem. You're the problem. You're the problem. Okay. I'm the problem. Yeah, you're the problem. Okay. Shoot. And then you leave. And what? The problem is still there. But you're not there to bounce that energy off of. So who's, but, so if you're not the problem and there's still an issue, who's the problem? They are. You know, so for some of them, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take them being, being forced into this hermit energy of seeing, you know, and for a lot of you, you know, it'll have to be an issue of this person doing that to, you know, and, and for some of you, you might be like, well, what is it going to do? They're just going to do it to somebody else, you know, and then it'll be on that person to learn, to learn the lesson, to walk away from this person, you know, and it, at the end of the day, it will always be on this person. To learn the lesson of stop projecting onto somebody else and look at yourself. Because eventually what this person is going to do is drive everyone else away from them. All their friends, all their family, everybody else away from them. And when there's nobody around them and they're still a problem, 
they're not they're not gonna have anyone else to blame but themselves. They're not gonna have any they're not gonna have any choice but to understand I'm I'm causing these issues. And that's a lonely lesson to learn, but that's on this person. Spirit, like I said, spirit's gonna give this person chance after chance after chance before it's like, okay, then we'll take everyone away from you. Then you'll just push everyone away from you, and when you're by yourself. Exactly. Healthy boundaries. You'll be by yourself. If that's what it takes. If that's what it takes for this person to learn, you know? And for some of you, this person's been doing this for lifetimes. Like, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. They're still learning, still trying to learn the same lesson. It's not for you to hold yourself back. It is written in the stars for it to be this way. So forgive, have compassion, take the lesson, leave the pain, and move on. And I understand that's a way easier said than done, especially when you, you put all kind of dynamics of this person is your parents and your parents are supposed to love you or this person's, your, you know, what, what not, what not. But believe me, I don't say this lightly because I promise you this is a lesson I'm learning myself. So believe me, I, I, I understand how hard it is personally. I really do. <laughs> I really, really do. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what I have for you guys. That just, that was just, um, yeah. What is the name of that song? Um, it's that If We Ever Broke Up song. If we ever broke up, I never, if we ever broke up, I'll never be sad. That song that's like so popular right now, I just kept hearing that song and it was the, the part of the song um, that was just like, um, if you keep wondering, baby, if I understand, I don't understand you. Yeah. So pack up your drama, your selfish dilemma. Your karma is you. That's what I, it's like. It's like seeing. It's like putting together different lyrics that don't actually go together. But it's like it's cutting out different lyrics and putting together basically like like if you don't get it, like it's like this person is always being like, I don't understand you. I don't understand who you are. I don't understand who you are. And it's because they don't take the time to understand who they are, right? Which is why they spend so much time tearing down other people around them because they don't spend time because they don't know themselves. Which is like, you know, it's like, that's the greatest gift that spirit gives you is the, is the, is the journey of self-knowledge, is the journey of knowing yourself, is the journey of knowing your body, knowing your mind, know how you tick, know how you work, because that's how you empower yourself. You know, that's the greatest power is our free will mind to think for ourselves. And that's a God, that's a God given gift that everybody gets, you know, spirit gives all of us. We're free will beings because we have the choice. We have the choice to evolve or we have the choice to stay the same. And they'll keep giving us that choice over and over and over and over and over again. But that doesn't mean that when you choose, when you choose to walk in the dark, that you won't get dark consequences, you know, that you won't receive the, the dark life that you're walking in, you know? And it's not up to you. Because, like, for some of you, this person is basically like, sacrifice your happiness. Sacrifice and walk in the dark with me. Right? Like, I'm your mother, or I'm your father, or I'm your sister, or I'm your brother, or I'm your lover, or I'm your twin flame. Walk in the darkness with me. You don't have to choose that. Just because you were born into this connection with this person does not mean that you have to choose to stay in it especially if this connection is toxic for you. And if it's the type of person that just wants to keep projecting but never come to the self-realization part of it, they just want to keep saying, no, see things from my side, no, see things from my side, no, see things from my side, but they don't take the option, they don't take the opportunity to see things from your side, you know? They can't give you exactly what they're asking from you. Don't go round and round and round and round with this person. Let them go round and round and round and chase their own tail. There's only so much. There's only so many conversations you can have. There's only so much before it's just like, look, like I'm just not involved in this anymore. Like I'm just out of here. Like I don't have time for this drama. I really don't. I got other soulmates. I got other. I got other stuff to spend to spend my energy on. And it's not for a lot of you. Um, for a lot of you, it's almost like this person has this energy of like I'm your burden to bear. Like, I'm, yeah, that's weird. 
This person is like, no, like your purpose is to endure me, is to let me act any way that I want to act and you stay standing right beside me. So it doesn't matter if I slap you a thousand times, you're supposed to be standing there right beside me ready to receive that thousand and one slap. Doesn't matter. Yes, this this definitely reminds me, for some of y'all, y'all need to go check out that reading that I did that was the, um, oh, what was the title of that? I'll try to remember what it was, but I can't remember. The title is slipping me right now, but it was the where it was like the, the, the karmic energy was trying to keep you like trapped, like stuck with them and trapped with them. Oh, actually, I don't know if I've released that yet. I actually might have that as a private video. I, okay, well, this is my sign that I need to release it. Yeah. Because honestly, I struggled with releasing that because I told I, I told a very personal story in the middle of it. And I was like, I don't know if I should release it with the story in it. So I was going back and forth as to whether or not I should be that, that honest about it. Because I felt like I kind of was long-winded with the story, but... It relates to what I'm talking about, but I was like, I don't know if I want to be that candid or that, like, tell, talk about that personal story with the collective. But now it's coming up again, so I feel like I'm just going to do what Spirit's asking me to do and just release it with the story in there. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> thanks for helping me work that out okay but that's that's definitely that in, in that reading it was about how this person you know this person would purposely self-sabotage themselves because they knew you'd always be there for them because that you knew you know it didn't matter and this person would do like very self-deprecating things would do very like very toxic things to keep you trapped in a cycle with them you know and for a lot of you the lesson that you are learning here is to walk away is to say, you're not my burden to bear. At some point, you have your choices, you know, you're choosing to live a life this way. This is not the way I choose to live my life. And this earthly connection or this soul connection that I feel is not a tether. I'm not bound to you, right? I'm not bound to you. And even if this person is like a twin flame energy, they are trying to stay in karmic energy. And they feel like even if even if they choose to stay in karmic energy, even if they choose to stay abusive, even if they choose to never evolve, that you're supposed to stand there and wait for them. Or that you're supposed to stand beside them anyway. Again. I don't have time for that. No sir, no ma'am. Mm-mm. Breeze that up out of here. We ain't got time for that. We really don't. But what I do have time for is to be dramatic with this fan. I sure do. I really do. Okay. That's what I got for y'all. Thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate it. Okay. If you like the content, give it a like. If this resonated for you and if you feel comfortable sharing it down below, please share your story. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it out loud, out loud. Okay. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it down below. You're welcome to email me if you need to talk about a story. Okay. Thank you guys so very much. All right. And if you're interested in getting a private reading with me, my, my email is listed down below. Okay. Thank you guys so very much for being here with me today. Thank you to your spirits and your guides for guiding you here to receive this information. Thank you to my spirits and to my guides that is allowing me to disseminate this information to you and keeping me always protected as I do so. I really appreciate you guys as always, okay? I hope this gave you the love light or clarity that you were looking for in your situation. If you dug the vibe and you're not already subscribed, join the tribe, okay? Give it a like, and I will see you guys in the next one, okay? Bye!